Good evening, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, February 4th, 11.08 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Real quick, we're going to look at the GFS model for North America, and it's showing a very, very heavy snow band over the next week and a half here in North America. And to the north, there is this persistent pattern of no snow. This is the minus 20 degree polar vortex zone where snow typically does not fall because there is no moisture in the air. This is the grand solar minimum pattern we're seeing, and it's exactly as predicted. The snowfall is getting heavier as we get further towards February and more pervasive, especially here in British Columbia and Alberta, where we're looking at upwards of three feet of snow in most areas. So we'll be watching this moving forward. Oh, you almost had it. Got to be quicker than that, Tom Brady, because as predicted here at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, that Vince Lombardi trophy goes to the Philadelphia Eagles, and that is a boom. <laughs> Bitter cold in the upper Midwest while California braces for record-breaking high temperatures. I mean, look at how concerned this woman is. Cold blast bringing more rain to the Northeast. And snow, a developing system in the central U.S. brought light snow Saturday to parts of the upper Midwest, including Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan. Snowfall totals are generally light across that band. We watched it progress up to 45 inches of snow in the Michigan area. Waterton, New York, lake effect snow dumped nearly 10 inches. Fast forward to Sunday morning, more light snow is falling across the Ohio River Valley and the western Appalachian Mountains. Winter weather advisories have been posted for much of the hillier areas in northern Georgia and New York. And Sunday night, that's where we're at. And that snow's going to continue to move up into the northeast. Man, she is concerned. Let's talk about how frigid it is in the no snow zone, which we just saw in the GFS model. Extreme cold warnings have been lifted for Manitoba, but the wind chill is still in the minus 30s. Southern parts of the province to see highs in the minus 16 C range. Oh my God. And that's a heads up for you guys over there in Manitoba. Extreme cold warning is an effect for Medicine Hat and surrounding areas, according to Environment Canada. This is Alberta. Extreme cold warnings for Medicine Hat and surrounding areas. Wind chills are reported near minus 40 and are expected to continue throughout the morning. Environment Canada said there's an inc increased risk to children, older adults, people with chronic illnesses, and those working outdoors, including you, Brent. They recommend limiting exposure and taking frequent breaks. And watching our channel. And that is today's first boom. Extreme cold warnings in Regina, Saskatoon. The southern half of the province stretching from Saskatoon down to the border was under an extreme cold warning for much of Sunday morning. Mark... Messness of Environment Canada said there was a ridge of high pressure stretching from the Yukon through southern Alberta and southern Saskatchewan called the polar vortex, bringing with temperatures minus 25 to minus 30 in the morning. Wind chills expected to be in the minus 40 range or colder with, oh, oh my goodness, and oh Jesus, it's cold. After mild weather in Vancouver and Sochi, Pyeongchang faces extreme cold. With the opening ceremonies for the 2018 Winter Games less than a week away, Pyeongchang is in the midst of a cold wave warning, according to Korean Meteorological Administration. Located in the Tabak Mountains, Pyeongchang region is often blasted by glacial winds from Siberia, ushering in frostbite-inducing temperatures during the winter. This year is no exception. On Sunday, temperatures sat at a brisk minus 11 C in the city, where they are expected to drop to close to minus 20 C, before the opening ceremonies on February 9th. Even Canadians who are used to the bone-chilling weather are shivering. Heads up, Canada. <laughs> Over there in Korea for the Winter Games. UK weather news. A foot of snow and bone-chilling sleet bring Monday morning chaos to the UK. Thank you for this fluff piece. Britain will freeze its way to work tomorrow with 12 inches of snow, bone-chilling sleet, and temperatures as low as minus 10 C, promised nationwide. 
as the country will stay locked in the chillier until mid-February as 10-day Scandinavian freeze grips the nation. Monday morning commuters will be warned of the real prospect of travel chaos that will make their journeys difficult or even impossible. Swaths of the country are on alert for winter showers with up to a foot of snow expected in parts of the end parts by the end this week. Government officials have ramped up health warnings. Much of the country's under level three cold weather action caution. Whatever that means, temperatures will plunge to minus 10 C over the coming nights with numbing winds making it feel closer to minus 15 C. Hail, sleet, and snow is forecast. And there the grid is. And that's a boom. Russia's coldest winter at minus 67 C, once in a century blizzard, is burying Moscow and is happening right now, expected to continue through Monday. This is coming from Sign of the Times. There's some video footage here. Uh, it is a lot of snow. There's some flights being canceled in the Moscow area and an article coming out of the Watchers. I'll leave you links to everything down below in the bottom left under Oppenheimer Ranch. Click show more. Snowfall of the century, record-breaking snow and freezing rain wreak havoc across Moscow. Heavy, wet snow, strong winds, and freezing rain are battering Russian capital Moscow since Saturday. Damaging homes, trees, and power lines and causing hazardous driving conditions. At least one person has been killed and five injured as of Sunday morning, February 4th. While the situation across the region is expected to worsen today, local media are already describing the event as a snowfall of the century. Meteorologists have appropriately dubbed it the Arctic invasion. And I call that the car on the, the tree on the car thing. That's boom. Massive floods totally fluxed Ar Argentina. Espili Mocmayo River reaches record highs. And they've got this amazing footage of some minivan that's in the middle of the river. And that's a boom. Biggest floods in a decade, as predicted. We're going to have flooding worldwide. Lubbock dry periods to surpass 1920s record in Texas. I wonder what that what happened back in the 1920s. Oh, there was a centennial minimum here. There was a solar minimum that lasted almost to through the Dust Bowl, the Depression. So history will repeat itself. And what I mean by that is Texas and California are now record highs are happening in California. That's because if we go to the paleogeographic reconstructions here. This entire region suffers from major droughts and becomes an arid zone. Let's move the easy bed. It's called Savannah, named after the Savannah Monitor, <laughs> which is a lizard, a dry lizard. It's cold-blooded. So that's Savannah. That's a dry area. I suggest you live on this green line. If you're looking to move, drops effect on crops, uh, crops, I'll leave you links to this map. This is severe drought bringing all the way back to the centennial minimum as predicted as we go into these grand solar minimums. Areas get hot and drought and crops fail and other regions get very cold and unpredictable. Seismic update, shallow 6.1 magnitude earthquake striking off Taiwan's uh, followed by several aftershocks. This is coming from the USGS downgrade service. The quake's epicenter, 15 kilometers north of the port city of Huanlin, at a depth of 8 kilometers, shallow quake. There were no immediate reports of any destruction caused by these tremors. Let's check a live update with the USGS downgrade service, see what they have to say. Interesting quakes happening. I just noticed here up above Greenland is an aftershock and the Quite significant 5.2 happening there on this mid-ocean ridge here, the mid-Atlantic ridge. Down here, equalizing the pressure, 5.0 on the southern mid-Atlantic. And here are those stack of quakes in Taiwan. One other thing I want to note is there is a bunch of moderate quakes kicking off today in the San Andreas area. High density of quakes in California. I mean, it's like rocking and rolling in this southern portion. So that is just a quick volcano news. 
Worldwide Volcano News and Updates. On the 5th, we've got Cinnabung erupting. And I went to look for some footage. Couldn't find any, but eruption is reported uh, just now while we're doing the video. And volcanic activity for the last 24 hours includes Fuego, Ducono, Reventador, Durialba, Mayon, and Savancaya. Mayon, there was an eruption reported. Ducono has volcanic ash emissions. Torialba, volcanic ash advisory. Reventador, the same. Fuego, volcanic ash, the same. Savancaya, continuous ash emission. And so on and so forth. You get links to all this down below where it says show more. Let's talk about Chelsea Clinton. Ocean temperatures are at an all-time high. Boom. No, they're not, dear. And we tweeted you right back with some graphs. Ocean temperatures have been much higher. And if you're too lazy to check, we'll check it for you. And we'll show you the graph. So, Chelsea Clinton talking about some nonsense. And let's get to the actual sea surface temperatures. First, let's go into the geologic past, the last 65 million years of history. And let's look at the deep ocean temperature. Now, the reason we're looking at this temperature is because the surface is easily heated. But the deep ocean is not. So if we look at the proxy for deep ocean temperatures, we can see how hot the ocean actually is. And here we are today down in this zone here. Now, that is the coldest it has been, according to this proxy, for 65 million years. So we're not at the hottest sea temperature ever. We're at the lowest ever. The hottest was here during the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum which happened 52 million years ago, according to science. Thank you, Chelsea. Let's go to the more recent data, 1854 to present. You can see almost no change in sea surface temperature. This is coming from the NCDC Nino 3.4 sea surface temperature anomaly data set from January 1854 to just around present. And what you can see is an oscillating pattern up and down <laughs> with a huge range of standard deviation up to five degrees so there is no catastrophic warming of anything it's in the standard norms and it goes up and down five degrees every couple years <laughs> so she does not know what she's talking about and she's fear-mongering let's go forward here and look at the recent forecast Coming from the National Weather Service, NSEP, and the CPC. Here we are, February, on the dotted hash. Here's the progression for the La Nina sea surface temperature anomaly, which is going to extend all the way through the summer. So this cool period, this usually comes back up here like this. This is the summer, winter, summer. But this summer, we're going to stay in La Nina or grand solar minimum pattern as we descend down and down and down and down and down like all these models are mostly predicting except this one which is the hockey stick model that's the global warming one right there 1200 year mini ice age was caused by global warming <laughs> they're talking about the younger dryas and I'm not even going to get into it, but I'll leave you links to that paper, and that's a heads up. Real quick before we close, I want to show you a graph that I quickly uh, made an overlay. This black line here is the total solar irradiance from 1950 to 2010, and it's overlaid on the temperature trends for Antarctic stations. So this is the, whoa. <laughs> Let's get back there. Oh, it was so good. Hmm, it's the other way. Here we are. So these are the temperature trends coming from McMurdo, Scott, and Haley. And down here we have Vostok and Advinson Scott. These are the Antarctic stations and the global temperature that they're recording. And real quick, you can see that there is no temperature change in Antarctica whatsoever. So any catastrophic ice, ice loss is not due to any change in temperature. But you can see temperature spikes here 
that is directly correlated to solar maximums during each cycle. Here we are in 24, back on 23, solar max spike here at McMurdo, Scott and Haley. Cycle 22, spike in temperature. It was warmer at solar maximum back in 1992 in Antarctica. Let's go back to 1981. Look at this spike correlating directly with cycle 21. Almost in all stations, there's a spike. There's almost a spike in almost all stations in temperature directly related to the sun's output. Here we have a spike in almost all stations. In 2002, huh. solar cycle 23, there was a spike in temperature. I wonder if the sun has anything to do with temperature on the planet. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Share this with like-minded people. We're headed into the eddy minimum, which is really the landscape minimum. If you look into it, it really shouldn't be called the eddy minimum. We should be calling it the landscape minimum. But that's neither here nor there. What is, is that the change in climate is coming. And proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance where we're headed. So here are the paleogeographic maps of the worst case scenario that may occur within 100 to 300 years. But these zones are going to change climatically to match this pattern in your lifetime. So if you have a chance to get out of those zones that are white or even blue, you should be considering it. Share this with like-minded people. Subscribe to our channel and be safe.